Happy New Year! Greetings and welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Kinston, North Carolina. Welcome to God's house, where it's good for us to be together in this way, to offer our gifts of praise and thanksgiving. That's right, I said Happy New Year. You did not uh, miss your calendar in any way, other than this is the beginning of Advent, which is also the beginning of a new church calendar year. And it's a great, great thing for us to be together to worship and mark this occasion together. If you've not already, I invite you to open up the bulletin for today's service. You can find it by clicking on the link to it in the description to this video. And while you're there, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel or like our Facebook page in whichever way uh, is most appropriate, wherever you are watching this video. In the bulletin, in addition to helping guide you through our worship service today, it will also highlight a few announcements that are significant to the life and ministry that we are trying to live into uh, here at St. Mary's. Uh, of note, uh, today uh, I'm very glad to welcome Liz Hankst, our family ministry coordinator, who will be guiding us in our response to the gospel today through what's called godly play. And I'm really, we'll say more about that later on in the service, but I'm just thankful that she is introducing uh, this way of storytelling and engaging with the good news of Jesus, uh, bringing that to our community today. Also, beginning today, we're starting a new adult forum as part of the Christian formation classes that are offered. The Art of Advent is the name of this four-week series that Vicki Kennedy is leading, uh, and it will help introduce us or just explain some wonderful art uh, mediums and pieces that uh, can be helpful to people as they engage in the life of faith through the season of Advent this year. There are Advent wreath kits ready to be picked up at the church office throughout this week. If you'd like one, feel free to swing by during our office hours and you'll get everything that you need to make an Advent wreath to have in your home this season and help walk you through this, uh, this season of Advent. And finally, I uh, just want to note that St. Mary's is uh, preparing for its uh, uh, participation in the diocesan convention this year. We can have up to four delegates at convention. The convention will be held only on one day, Saturday, February 13th, and it will be via Zoom. So if that is of interest to you, you have to be a confirmed member 16 years or older, uh, let me know if you have any questions about what uh, diocesan convention is and what participation in it would look like. Well, I'd love to talk with you. Uh, feel free to be in touch with me in the usual ways, email or phone, and we'll talk more. Friends, again, welcome. It is so good for us to be together. I pray God's blessing over you and our time of worship together this day. Our liturgy will begin in just a moment. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let us pray. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you, Lord, meet us, even if in the mess of our world. Hope that you, Lord, still see us, though we may feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who work for those who wait for him. 
You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. And because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. And now join me in the selection of Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tear, tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us. O Lord God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you await for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. 
It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let me repeat a word from that gospel. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, and later, keep awake. You know, Advent, as I've said at, the, at, our, at my greeting, is the beginning of a church year. It's all about time. It's about time when the, the sun will return. It's about time as we remember and prepare for when we recall and celebrate the first coming of Jesus in the, in the manger, in the nativity. Keeping time is a huge part of the life of faith for believers and followers of Jesus. And so today I'm glad that we have an opportunity to discuss time and timekeeping and what it means to observe it. How can we stay awake and keep watch with our Lord? Well, the church calendar, in the ways that it invites us into rhythms that are fresh and new, beginning afresh, starting uh, over and over again, keeping us from getting into a rut, starting up new seasons that invite our attention to awaken. The church calendar is such a gift. And we're about to learn more about that through the godly play story that Liz Hanks is about to tell. So I welcome her, and I welcome your attention to what she will be inviting us into, not only what she will be teaching, but also into the questions that she invites us to wonder together. Get ready for a story with me. Open our ears and open our hearts to hear what God has to tell us. Time, time, time. There is a time to go to school. There is a time to come home. There is a time to work. There is a time to play. There's a time to go to church. Some say that time is in a line. So I wonder what that would look like. Right here. This is time. Time in a line. And it's brand new to just being born. And it continues and continues. And now this part that was brand new is now the part that's old. And time continues and it keeps going. I wonder if time will go on forever. Does time end? Right there, that's the ending. And now, this ending is new. And this beginning that was new is now old. You know what the church did? They tied the beginning that is like an ending to the ending that is like a beginning to remind us that for every beginning, there is an ending. And for every ending, there is a new beginning. Now let's look. Here are the three great times. 
that's Christmas, that's Easter, and that's, whew, whew, that's hot, that's, that's Pentecost. Now these three great mysteries, people can walk right by them and not even know they're walking through a great mystery. That's why we have times where we get ready to come close to these great mysteries. Here's Advent, where we get ready to come close to the mystery of Christmas. And here's Lent, where we get ready to come close to the mystery of Easter. Now look, Lent is longer than Advent. That's because Easter is a much bigger mystery than the mystery of Christmas. It is such a big mystery that Easter spills over into not just one Sunday, but many Sundays. And the season of Easter is how we get ready to come close to the mystery of Pentecost. And then we have the great green growing Sundays. There is a lot of great green growing Sundays. I wonder if we can build the church calendar again. Now watch close because the church not only tells time with colors, the church tells time with clocks. First, let's do the three great Sundays, Christmas, Easter, and whew, whew, that's, that's still hot, that's, that's Pentecost. Now, to come close to the mystery of Christmas, we have four Sundays of Advent. Sometimes these are purple because purple is the color of royalty. And sometimes, like here at St. Mary's, they're blue. They're blue for the Mother Mary because the Mother Mary is how God decided to give Jesus to us. And then we have Lent. Six Sundays of Lent. That's how we get ready to come close to the mystery of Easter. Lent is purple because that's the color of royalty. And Jesus was called a king, but not the kind of king that people expected. He was a whole new kind of king. Then we've come to Easter, which spills over into six Sundays, the whole season of Easter. During the season of Easter, that's when Jesus died, and that was sad. But the disciples, they knew Jesus in a whole new way now. They went out of Jerusalem with Jesus, and he died. And then he went up, and the Holy Spirit came down. And then the disciples knew Jesus in a whole new way. They glowed with the Holy Spirit, and when they spoke, their tongues were like fire. 
why Pentecost is red like fire. They knew that they had Jesus with them, just like we do. Now let's put the great green growing Sundays in. Between Christmas and the beginning of Lent, the most great green growing seasons there can ever be are nine. So we'll put nine in here. And now, let's put the great green growing Sundays after Pentecost. You know what the great green growing Sundays after Pentecost are called? The Sundays after Pentecost. This is where the days get long and it's summer and people get out of school and they play outside. Some people go on vacation. Some people go to camp. And then school starts all over again. Maybe we have a new teacher. Maybe we meet new friends. But then all of the new things become normal. And the days grow shorter and shorter, and then just when it feels like the light is about to run out, we get to Advent, which is the beginning of our church year all over again. And we move into the mystery of Christmas, and then we prepare again with Lent, where we move into the mystery of Easter, and a whole season of Easter. And then we move into the mystery of Pentecost, and all the great green growing Sundays. It's all here, everything we need. Right here. Every new beginning has an ending, and every ending has a new beginning. Even if you're watching this at home, I hope you'll wonder with me. I wonder how these colors make you feel. The blue, and the purple, and the white, and the red, and the green, how do they make you feel? I wonder which of these colors is most important. I wonder where these colors go when we don't see them. I wonder why the church tells time with color. Thanks for wondering with me. Thank you, Liz. Godly play is traditionally something that is done as a children's offering, but I suspect that there are some of you who are maybe not considering yourselves children who learned from this story like I did. These questions, these wondering questions, are all part of the journey of faith for all of us, no matter what our age is. And so I wonder what other questions you might be wondering. I wonder what God is inviting us into as a church family, as households, as individuals, this Advent season. I wonder how you will be observing Advent this year. I wonder how this Advent will be a wonderful experience for us in practicing staying awake and alert for not only our Lord's return in that time that we just won't know until it occurs, but also for staying alert for the presence of God in our lives 
and the invitation of God to participate in his kingdom building around us. I wonder. These things have been said to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our diocesan bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, for the leaders of the nations, for Roy, our governor, Don, our mayor, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Kinston, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those preparing for marriage, especially 
Jen and Jason, Sydney and Zane, Eliza and Josh, and Hadley and Ian. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. May this Advent season be one of heightened anticipation of your presence in this season of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. In the communion of St. Mary and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. I invite you now to join in an act of spiritual communion, whereby we seek with heart and body to make our full communion with God, beginning with the words our Lord himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life, and in the life to come. Amen.
Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.